in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little there value, is little in, value opposing in opposing the threat of a closed society, closed society by imitating its arbitrary, its arbitrary restrictions. restrictions. Even today, Even today there, is there is little value in ensuring, in ensuring the, survival the survival of our nation, of our nation if, our if our traditions do not survive, do not survive with, it. with it. And there is, and there very, is grave very grave danger, danger that an announced need, need for increased, for increased security, security will be seized, be seized upon by those anxious, anxious to expand, to expand its meaning to the very, the very limits, limits of official, of official censorship, censorship and, concealment. and concealment. That I do that not, I do not intend, intend to permit to the extent, to the extent that it's in my control. And no official, and no official of my administration, administration whether his rank is high or low, high or low civilian, civilian or military, or military should, interpret should interpret my words, my words here, tonight here tonight as an excuse, as an excuse to, to censor, censor the news, the news to, stifle to stifle dissent, dissent to, cover to cover up our mistakes, our mistakes or, to withhold or to withhold from the press and the public the facts the they facts deserve, they to, deserve know. to know. <laughs> The saddest part of this tragedy is that all of these horrible changes are being done in the name of patriotism and protecting freedom. They are justified by good intentions while believing the sacrifice of liberty is required for our safety. Nothing could be further from the truth. An armed man is a citizen, a disarmed man is a subject, no check the world we're living in. The kind of place where a rep can conceal carry But the idea of you doing the same is quite scary It might vary depending upon affiliation Make no mistake, the objective is to disarm the nation It's hard to face that your fellow humans can see degree But please believe the best type of slave is one who believes he's free It used to be you could control a million people Now it's easier to kill a million quick than to be peaceful So we the people need to rise out of the zombie state She threw the lies and passed the color of Obama's face I'm on the case for those who can't express the desperation And for the record, I ain't stopping till they Stomp my face in. I pledge allegiance to the U.S. Constitution and hope we prosecute these politicians for its prostitution. It's either live free or die, so I don't ask why. I just know we're running out of time. So put your fists in the sky if your mind is like mine and you won't go calm into the night. It's either live free or die, so I don't ask why. I just know we're running out of time. So put your fists in the sky if your mind is like mine and you won't go calm into the night. The beauty of the Second Amendment is, is that it won't be needed until they try to take it from residents, already been taken from veterans, so how long you think it'll take before they coming for your next of kin? 2,700 mine resistant trucks and 7,000 automatic weapons in the midst of cuts, add 2 billion hollow points and we're just supposed to trust that you can't use them in war, but they're really not for us? In God we trust, not the government incorporated, the killing innocents at our expense of course we're hated, we need our country back today, I say no more debate and close the door and hatred, take the reins and change the course we're taking with every day that passes by i'm seeing more awaken they're waking up to see the dollar as it's more inflated then if you criticize the president then you're a racist make the connection once you do you'll see the correlation it's either live free or die so i don't ask why i just know we're running out of time so put your fists in the sky if your mind is like mine and you won't go calm into the night it's either live free or die so i don't ask why 
just know we running out of time So put your fists in the sky if your mind is like mine And you won't go calm into the night all you need for evil to succeed is for good men to do nothing, and that statement stands true indeed. How many congressmen and women turn their heads and sign the NDAA without reading what it said? Then the geoengineering chemtrails over our heads while Monsanto tests genetics and control of what we're fed. All the while, Ben Bernanke runs the Fed, a private company whose policies to work us till we're dead. The empire of the city's no conspiracy. Don't take my word, do some research if you've been hearing me. Cause once you do, I'll bet my life it'll be clear to see that evil men have pulled the strings throughout our history. Now that we know it's time to raise our fists and take a stand. The only way to make a change is stand and face the sham. This isn't just America that we've been fighting for. This is for freedom, every man, woman, and child born. It's either live free or die, so I don't ask why. I just know we're running out of time. So put your fists in the sky if your mind is like mine and you won't go calm into the night. It's either live free or die, so I don't ask why. I just know we're running out of time. So put your fists in the sky if your mind is like mine and you won't go calm into the night. The last nail is being driven into the coffin of the American Republic. Yet Congress remains in total denial as our liberties are rapidly fading before our eyes. The process is propelled by unwarranted fear and ignorance as to the true meaning of liberty. It is driven by economic myths, fallacies, and irrational good intentions. The rule of law is constantly rejected, and authoritarian answers are offered as panaceas for all our problems. Okay, quit your grab ass. Quit okay. your horse playing. Okay. Well, you quit horse playing. Let's Here we go. My uh, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Hosea 4 6, King James Bible. What is a society like without Christianity, without free speech? Students killed their principal, arguing he was a traitor to their leader's ideologies. They quartered him while he was still alive at school's kitchen, and then they cooked him. The first one eating a piece was a girl. She was the principal's son's girlfriend. Some years later, she said, I just wanted to make it clear. I didn't feel any sympathy for him, that I was as communist as the rest. In some high schools, students killed their teachers and roasted them at high school's yard. In some bars directed by the government, corpses were hanged on the wall with butcher hooks and served as daily specials. Most victims were wealthy people before the Cultural Revolution in China. Some of them owned properties or businesses. Others were just intellectuals. A page of those official documents stated, in a meeting celebrated at Guangzhou High School, 12 people, leaders included, were killed in public. Liver and other organs were taken off their bodies and brought to the county government's office to be cooked at their bar, their restaurant. Some officers joined the party. This is according to the Scarlet Memorial, Tales of Cannibalism in Modern China by Xing Yai, who recently escaped from Communist China with this top secret government report. Barbara Rudolph, writing in Time Magazine's Unspeakable Crimes on June 24, 2001, explains, Mao Zedong's cultural revolution was an eruption of ideological fervor, mass hysteria, and outright brutality that left an estimated 10 to 80 million Chinese dead and ruined the lives of millions more. Now tales of even more horrible excesses from the years between 1966 and 1976 are coming to light. Allegations of cannibalism in the name of revolutionary purity. Evidence of cannibalism was not only practiced but condoned and even encouraged by some Communist Party officials emerged last week with the arrival in the U.S. of Xing Yai, a dissident novelist who has been on Beijing's most wanted list since the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre. The topic of my speech is academic freedom, communism or the Constitution? You decide. Do you want communism in America? Or do you want freedom as defined and protected by the constitutions and protected by the written contract of your student handbook? Do you want freedom to speak or read on campus? Do you want freedom to speak off campus? Do you want academic freedom? Do you want religious freedom? You want religious freedom on campus. 
Or do you want to be eaten by commie cannibals? You decide. Our current so-called president is a proud communist who attended meetings with his Marxist friends, business associates, and college professors who were convicted terrorist bombers and murderers. Professor Bill Ayers, who says he wrote Obama's autobiography, Dreams of My Father, was a convicted member of the Weather Underground terrorist group. Blew up police stations, killed cops, killed members of his own group, blew up the Pentagon. At these communist meetings, Obama agreed that when their communist revolution succeeds in America, 25 million U.S. citizens must be rounded up and executed because they will never accept communism in America. This is according to FBI informant Larry Grothwall, who died last week, in his 1976 autobiography, Bringing Down America, an FBI informer with the Weathermen, and the 1982 CBS documentary, No Place to Hide. These communists are now in control of the American education system. They have already genocided tens of millions of people. Over 10 million Americans are genocided by abortion every year in America now. Do you believe that communism can't happen here? My sister is currently a law professor who ran Yale University's student exchange program for communist China. She actually lived in Shanghai, China and spoke Chinese. Now she calls herself a proud Marxist. Guess who she voted for in the past two presidential elections? As a college student, I recently had a college speech assignment banned and censored, and it got a zero grade because it mentioned the plague of red light traffic cameras in Tennessee. Red light cameras in Knoxville, Tennessee are owned by Lasercraft, a company based in communist China. This, this Chinese company is owned by the Communist Party. Thus, the Communist Party has replaced traffic cops in America, traffic courts in America, and is now getting our tax money from America enforcing our traffic laws. Although this ban on my homework assignment violated the Constitution, the Student Handbook, and the Americans with Disabilities Act, college employees supported the ban and refused to obey the law. What can you do if your free speech rights are trampled upon by a college or university? The First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and petition the government for redress of their grievances. Now, you know, these are nice words coming from the Constitution, but what organization has a proven history of helping fight for academic freedom on college campuses for both students and teachers? FIRE is the, is the foundation for individual rights in education. It is a nonprofit corporation whose mission statement is legal representation and advice free advice for students and teachers to regain their stolen constitutional right to freedom of speech on campus, and in many cases off campus. Censorship on campus can take many forms. The following are documented examples from FIRE's video, Silencing You, Five Outrageous Cases of Campus Censorship, uploaded to YouTube on September 19, 2011, and from their website. One, an employee of Indiana University was found guilty of racial harassment for reading a book about racial harassment. The University of Delaware grilled students about their sex lives and demanded that they date black people, Muslims, and homosexuals. Syracuse University College of Law tried to destroy the education and career of a student for publishing a comedy blog about life in law school. Syracuse University expelled an education graduate student for his Facebook comments about his experience teaching in high school. Hines Community College in Mississippi kicked a student out of class for saying the F word outside of class, jeopardizing his Pell Grants and professional career. Indian River Community College banned a Christian group from presenting the popular movie on campus, The Passion of the Christ. These are just a few of the cases of censorship that FIRE has documented on its website. As horrible as these examples sound, FIRE was able to win all these cases. Um, the students were able to continue in their career. Teachers were able to continue in their career. Everybody's happy. FIRE's Guide to Free Speech on Campus is a free 260-page e-book, first published in 2005. It details the history of censorship in America and on campus and what you can do about it in great detail. Students and faculty can file a complaint with FIRE who will then investigate their case. You can just do that on their website at www.thefire.org. If the case meets FIRE's mission statement, FIRE will initiate action to help solve their problem. This might be as simple as writing a letter to the school administration, and that often achieves the desired result. 
Fire's website page titled University of Tennessee Speech Code Repeal details a, a successful letter writing campaign. Fire wrote a letter to the president of the University of Tennessee of Knoxville. This letter forced UT to change its dangerous and illegally vague definition of sexual harassment that would even ban women's groups on campus. Fire warns that Obama's current Department of Education policy threatens a never before seen attack on free speech of everyone under the guise of allegations of sexual harassment, bullying, and hate speech. And they control the educational money and whatnot to the university, so they have a lot of influence over these colleges to twist their arm to do things they, don't, they wouldn't normally do. So, in conclusion, do you want communism or do you want cannibalism on campus? Or do you want academic freedom? So support fire now to prevent the zombie apocalypse from, of commie cannibals from uh, running amok on your college campus. Survive to operate, alarm red, this is not a drill. Uh, hey, fire, call me, please, thanks. Copyright, John Lee, 2013. Awesome. <laughs>
We're about a mile and a half of 321 right now. Flight's set over 100 miles an hour, I'm sure. It's out of sight now. Alright, what's the nearest of that lock again? Right, 
Five, six. You notify we have a compound fracture of the kid's head, uh, possibly a cold fracture in the other leg, and some busted fingers. Uh, pretty good amount of smell. Looks like a pretty good amount of blood loss here via the alert, conscious, and talking. So uh, we can uh, notify rural metro. <laughs>
time. Have you slow down. Ready, they 
may not be exact, but they should get you close. Okay, go ahead. 35, 32.85 by 84, 03, 78. Two, copy. And just as a reference, it's going to be uh, near Tallahassee uh, on uh, Carterwood Highway. It's where those coordinates are too. Apparently, uh, your pilot may be familiar there at the boat ramp, I think, or a small store. Copy. 352, 352, 352. Yes, I've got 364 on the phone. Having responded to a storm, make sure that LZ there in front of the store is clear. Cancel. Yes, sir.
decide to dismiss it? Uh, well, not uh, just we felt that it wasn't uh, we just felt it was in the best interest of, uh, of the public to dismiss it. Hi, Brittany. <laughs> 